This right here is the new Aventon Andreas. If you saw my thoughts on the build-up video, that I think that this thing is positioned pretty well to take on the Kilo TT Pro, the king of the value steel fixed gear. Reynolds 520 steel, Sugino RD2 cranks along with a whole bunch of other stuff that adds up to just a really nice package. But the way that a bike rides can be completely different from what the specs say on the sheet. So let's take this thing out for a spin and see how the Aventon Andreas actually rides. For the most fun that I've had on a bike, check out our channel sponsor Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description. So for the Andreas, what I'm particularly looking for, since this is a Ventons first steel bike, whether it rides like a nice steel bike. Also, with the cranks, the Sugino RD2s, I'm really curious how they'll stack up against its bigger brother, the Sugino 75s, and whether the RD2s, although they are a 130 BCD crank set, whether they're actually better or worse than a Ventons own in-house 144 BCD crank set. So let's take this thing out for a ride. So far, the thing that I noticed the most about the Andreas is, number one, it's really smooth, and number two, the gear ratio. Now with the gear ratio, it's actually a 48-15 gear ratio, and I'm riding brakeless in Sacramento, completely flat here, and I didn't like a 48-15 on the Aventa Matero. It was a bit too heavy, and it felt like I had to fight the bike. But with the Andreas, I'm finding that I actually quite like 48-15. It feels like it accelerates a lot more smoothly than the chattery Matero, and I'm able to keep up a comfortable cadence even with that gear ratio. Overall, it just feels like a really good, solid steel bike. It has that classic steel ride quality where it's just really smooth, and let's just get some more miles in and see what else I think about it. So Vinton is pretty good with how their bikes look and a lot of the choices that they make often cater to how the bike looks. Case in point with the Andreas is the track grips on the drop bars. So while the track grips, they look really premium, the problem that I've run into is that because it's winter, although it's not too cold in California, I do find that my hands get cold on the bare metal. Along with that, it's not terribly comfortable to ride on the corners of the bike because the bars are a bit slippery. So effectively, because there's not bar tape, you have two hand positions, which is on the tops and in the drops. Here's your charge on. So far, I have about 30 miles on the event in Andreas, and moving forward with riding and reviewing this bike, the question that I'd like to keep in my mind is the event in Andreas, the Kilo TT Pro killer. Of course, right now, these are just my first impressions, and my opinions are likely to change in time for the full review. But I have ridden both the Kilo TT and the event in Andreas, although it's not an apples to apples comparison because I built up my own Kilo TT Pro with slightly different components, SRAM Omniums, Velocity D. Deep V's slash TB14s. It should still give me a rough idea of how the bikes should compare under real world conditions. With that said, even though my Kilo TT Pro from a few years ago was quote unquote nicer, which means more expensive than the stock Aventon Andreas, I would even say that I like the Aventon Andreas ride quality better than the Kilo TT Pro. Overall, the Andreas has a pretty neutral ride quality, and I mean that in a good way. It's super smooth with a touch of springiness and and liveliness that that Reynolds 520 steel brings. Like on a lot of steel bikes, sprinting and accelerating doesn't feel amazing, but it feels perfectly adequate. At no point did I wish that the bike was stiffer or had more aggressive geometry, but it felt really good at those medium efforts where you're likely to be riding your bike most of the time. But even when getting the bike up to speed, it was still able to hold its own. A lot of entry-level steel bikes can feel overly mushy in the bottom bracket area when 
sprinting and accelerating, but that's not the case for the Andreas. It maintains that neutral, nice feeling ride quality no matter how you ride it. And as for the Sagino RD2 cranks, they actually really surprised me. Of course, they're not going to be as stiff as the Sagino 75s. They feel stiffer and nicer to sprint on compared to the cranks found on the Aventa Matero and Cordoba and on the State 4130 core line. And they come really close in stiffness and ride quality to the State black label cranks. And this is coming from a 130 BCD crank set. So far, I think it's really impressive and it's one of the most, if not the most underrated crank set. I have pretty extensive experience with Sugino 75s and Tram Omniums. And while I would not ride these instead of my Sugino 75s, I also wouldn't mind if I had to. But because they are square taper and because they are good enough for most uses, I would actually rather have the Sugino RD2s over Tram Omniums because they're so much more reliable. The only time that I wished they were stiffer was when I was doing some climbing, but that's still with a 48-15 ratio. And these cranks are really great. As far as the event in Andreas's cornering goes, everything feels really neutral and natural. It's not as fun to flick around corners as the Kilo TT Pro, but that more neutral geometry also makes it more comfortable for longer rides. And speaking of comfort, it's likely that you're going to find the Kilo TT Pro's pedals a lot more comfortable and that you don't exactly need to replace them out of the box, unlike the Event and Andreas. At first, I really didn't like the sound because it's the same one that they used on their aluminum fixed gears, which I thought didn't really match the aesthetic of the Andreas. The whole modern and striped design aesthetic does actually complement the Andreas pretty well. Of course, I still think that a plain black saddle would have been the way to go. And as far as the saddle's comfort goes, I find that it's fine. I personally wouldn't replace it out of the box and I'm someone that normally rides Brook saddles. Of course, every butt is different. Similar to the Aventa Matera, the Aventa Andreas's geometry doesn't feel as aggressive as it looks. I actually find it quite comfortable to ride in the drops for most of my riding. The shallower drops matched with the bike's geometry actually make it pretty comfortable to do so. And the fact that it has track grips instead of bar tape actually isn't a huge deal. I have had some quality control issues with the Andreas though, most notably in the paint. The white bands don't exactly match up perfectly at the seams and you can see the paint underneath them. Along with that, the white band on the top tube is particularly irksome for me since it isn't perfectly aligned. Some of the components were a bit grimier out of the box than I'd like to see for a brand new bike. And what I thought was the biggest issue was also just cosmetic. The paint chip in the track end that was slightly squished. I thought that this might be the Kilo TT Pro killer because overall I thought that the quality control was a lot better because it's just cosmetic issues whereas with the Kilo TT Pro its most common quality control issue is with really wide variances in tire clearance. But upon closer inspection of the Andreas, the Andreas's rear triangle looks like it can fit at least a 28C tire, maybe even a 32C tire, but but it only got two points of the rear triangle correct and that third point at the brake bridge is really tight even for the stock 25c tires you can work around this though by adding more chain links and having your wheel sit further out of the dropout but you can only add so many chain links until your axle is no longer in the dropout the really tight clearance at the brake bridge also begs the question how consistent are the event and andreas's forks the fork that i got was all right but across the 200 bikes of the that they produce, how good are the forks? Because of that tire clearance issue that I've found, the Aventon Andreas versus the Kilo TT Pro debate isn't as clear cut as I originally thought. I also have some other minor gripes. Number one, I know that they chose track grips over bar tape because they look a lot cooler and I don't blame them for doing that. Although it's not as practical as bar tape, I would at least like to see an included top two protector so people aren't denser their frames at lockups or when they crash. And Although I've only ridden about 30 miles on the bike and 10 of which being in the rain, the drive side on the bottom bracket has started to develop an occasional creak. It is a pretty easy fix, but it is a little bit unfortunate since I only have about 30 miles on it. So is this the Kilo TT Pro 
killer. It's not really looking like it's shaping out to be. Instead, it's looking like it's a great option if you want something that's not a Kilo TT, but still a great value for the money. It just seems that the Andreas is plagued by some first gen issues that are holding it back a bit. Outside the US though, where it's really difficult or expensive to get a Kilo TT Pro, the answer is a bit more interesting. Prices vary a lot for bikes outside of the US, but you can actually get one for a pretty reasonable price. At the same price as in the US at 500 US dollars, I think that the Events and Andreas is a great buy. Even if you have to spend $600, I think that's a fair price for this quality of a bike. Even up to $650, although it's not ideal, you still can make a case for the Events and Andreas since it's so much better than the competition, mainly the State 4130 Black Label, the Fuji Feather or Fuji Track, and the Pure Cycles Premium. As far as pure specs and component quality goes compared to its competition, this is just so much better. Check out our channel sponsor, Wabi Cycles, with a buttery smooth, lively riding quality that only top shelf steel can bring. It's the nicest riding bike that I've ever ridden. It's the most fun that I've had on a bike, and that makes it pretty easy for me to ride my Wabi Special as my daily bike. Wobbies are specced with no-nonsense, high-performing components, and even a bike snob like myself can't rationalize upgrading, but in reality, side grading to nicer components because the stock components are just that good. So if you're looking for your end-all, be-all fixed gear for street riding, that will likely be the most fun that you've had on a bike. Check out Wobby Cycles linked at the top of the description. All right, with that, I'm going to ride the Events and Andreas a bit more for the full review. Of course, my opinions may change. These are just my first impressions. But if you have any experience with the Andreas, please do let me know in the comments what you think of the bike. And with that, life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.